Hello, this video is one of the modules on offer as part of the Foundation Online Training Course. Our unique course has helped over 10,000 people to study for their Foundation exam. And the course consists of online lessons, videos like this one, quizzes and mock tests. To access our free course and to get the latest version of this video and our collection of videos, go to www.hamtrain.co.uk. Now, on with the module. Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Here's what we'll be looking at in this module. EMC, understanding and preventing interference to neighbouring electrical equipment. Hello, my name is Pete and I'll be your guide for this module. This is the Electromagnetic Compatibility or EMC module. In this module we look at what causes interference, the various ways of reducing interference, different transmission modes, antennas and earths and good station design. Let's look at what EMC is. Electromagnetic compatibility, or EMC, is the avoidance of interference between two pieces of electronic equipment. Transmitters can cause interference to other equipment, such as your neighbour's TV or radio. And as a radio amateur, you need to understand the impact and how to minimise the likelihood of causing unwanted interference. As a radio amateur, there is a chance that your radio signals could cause interference to all sorts of devices, such as TV sets and computer monitors, FM, AM and digital radio, cordless and fixed landline phones, things like touch lamps, baby monitors and closed circuit TV systems. The ability for a piece of equipment not to suffer from interference is known as its immunity and some equipment is more immune to radio signals than others. Looking at some typical causes of interference, let's look here at a home hi-fi system. You could pick up interference from the aerial or from the aerial pickup cable. Speaker cables and speakers themselves can be susceptible to interference. It could be the case on the hi-fi or the immunity of the device or you could get interference through the household mains. A look now at TV interference. Amateur radio signals have the potential to interfere with TV, especially digital TV freeview signals. Interference will result in the picture being pixelated and the sound breaking up or both picture and sound stopping altogether. This can be particularly worse in areas where there is a weak freeview signal or where someone is using a TV amplifier. Here is an example of pixelation being caused as a result of interference to digital TV. So how can we minimise interference? Well it depends on the exact problem. One of the best ways of reducing interference is to reduce the field strength by moving the transmitting antenna further away from the thing you're interfering with. Also reducing the power. The more power you use, the more likely you are to cause interference and over a wider range. You can also fit filters or chokes to the antenna or to the thing that's picking up the interference. You need to fit filters or chokes as close to the affected device as possible. If the interference is coming through the home main system, you can also add a filter to the mains power supply leads. You can also address earth problems, which we'll discuss later in this module. A look at various filter types here. Pictured here is a clip-on ferrite. This snaps over an existing cable and can help to reduce interference. Pictured here is a device that can be used to filter out interference on a TV set. One end plugs into the TV antenna socket 
and the other into the feeder to the TV antenna on the roof. These are relatively cheap and an easy way of reducing TV interference. Pictured here is a wound ferrite ring. And you may notice on some equipment such as laptops, you will find a ferrite filter is built into the lead. As a quick safety note, homemade filters are potentially dangerous. Some information now on how to test for interference. You'll hopefully remember from the license condition modules that you are required by your license to test your equipment from time to time. A piece of equipment called a dummy load can be very helpful for station testing. This is basically a screened resistor. It will allow you to test whether your signal is causing interference or whether the interference is going through connected interface leads or the mains. To use a dummy load for testing, instead of connecting an antenna to your transmitter, you connect the dummy load to the transmitter. You then transmit as normal and your signal will go into the dummy load and not be radiated. When buying a dummy load, it's important to make sure you get one that's the correct value to make sure it's suitable for the power that you'll be transmitting. A look now at modes and EMC. From the earlier module, you'll hopefully recognise frequency modulation, amplitude modulation and the symbol for data. In general, FM frequency modulation causes less interference. Handy way of remembering this, FM as friendly modulation. AM or upper or lower sideband SSB tends to cause more interference as the amplitude of the signal varies. Data is normally constant modulation, so is less of a problem than speech on AM or upper or lower sideband. Again, remember friendly modulation is one of the better ones and AM or SSB is more likely to cause interference. A few words about RF Earth. You can use an RF Earth to minimise the RF currents leaking into the mains and therefore interfering with other mains equipment. You should never use the mains Earth as a radio Earth. Also, don't use radiators or water pipes. Some may be metal, but some are plastic. Ideally, you should be looking at putting a copper stake into the ground as close to the shack as possible. You should use heavy gauge wire to connect from the transmitter or the AMU to form your RF earth. Let's look at antennas and EMC. We talked in a previous module about the dipole. This is commonly used for HF. It's a balanced antenna. The antenna is connected to the transmitter or the AMU ATU using unbalanced coax cable. You may need a ballon, pictured here on the screen, to go from the unbalanced feeder to the balanced dipole antenna. The shield of the coax would be connected to your RF earth, so any interference getting into the cable will go direct to your RF earth. So looking at good station design, we start with our power supply unit that provides the voltage to the radio. A filtered mains plug for your PSU is a good idea. Your transmitter. You would then use a filter to filter out any frequencies that you don't want to transmit. Here is your VSWR meter and your AMU ATU with a connection to earth. From the AMU ATU coax to the ballon where it will convert to the balanced antenna. So using high quality cables and connectors, having a good RF earth and using mains and RF filters where necessary is all good practice. Antenna positioning matters. In an ideal world, you would like to set your antenna up as far away from houses and other antennas as possible. And as you'll remember from propagation, as high as possible. 
For HF, a balanced antenna, ideally a horizontal dipole, will generate less interference than the other antenna types. So here's an example of a good setup using a balanced antenna. Here you can see the HF antenna is sighted high away from a house, also far enough away from the TV antenna to reduce interference. We're using good quality coax and there is an RF earth very close to the shack. Compare that with the end fed antenna which is just a random length of wire. This is an unbalanced system. If you are going to use one of these you would need to have the system fed from the end of the garden. Again your RF earth as close to the shack as possible and just be aware you can see here the uh, unbalanced antenna is fairly close to the TV aerial so some care may be needed. Here's an example of a poor setup. Fed from the house end, not the garden end, very close to the TV antenna and you'll note there's no RF earth. What about dealing with neighbours if they believe that you are causing interference? Well to avoid disputes it pays to be helpful, overall be diplomatic and also to cooperate. You should conduct a few basic tests in cooperation with your neighbour just to double check it's definitely you that's causing interference. Most problems can be resolved quickly and easily, more importantly cheaply. For example the simple filter that we looked at earlier is less than £10 typically. Your neighbour may consult Ofcom if they believe that you're causing interference. They will be charged a fee. Ofcom may visit and test your equipment to see if you are the cause. If there is an interference issue it's a very sensible idea to keep a log. If the neighbour claims you're causing interference, get them to keep a note of when that interference is happening. If you log your transmissions as well, you can see if when their interference is happening matches up with when you're transmitting. If Ofcom get involved, they may ask you or your neighbour to keep a log to confirm where the interference is coming from. You should note that if Ofcom does get involved they may ask you and your neighbour to keep a log to confirm that the interference is definitely related to your transmissions. Looking now at EMC and vehicles. Care is needed when using a transmitter in a car. You should seek professional advice before installing anything in your vehicle. The vehicle owner is responsible for ensuring that radio equipment is compatible with the vehicle's electrical and management systems and does not affect the safety of the vehicle. You should also note that you may need to inform the vehicle insurer that you have modified the vehicle. If you are installing equipment into a vehicle, any tests using mobile radio equipment should be made while the vehicle is stationary and with all of the vehicle electronic systems operating before you try any on-road tests. Obviously you don't want to be causing any radio interference to the car's electronic systems. You should also note that vehicle ignition and battery charging systems can cause electrical interference on the reception of any radio equipment you install. Advice on reducing interference and antenna setup is available from several sources, including the RSGB, various online websites, in antenna books, and also from local radio clubs. The RSGB offers a range of free EMC leaflets, some of which are designed to be given to your neighbours. Advice is available from the RSGB EMC committee via the RSGB website. If you're looking for more information, search EMC at www.rsgb.org. That's it for our look at EMC. As a reminder, EMC stands for Electromagnetic Compatibility. You need to be able to understand the symptoms and the causes. Ideally, you should have a good RF earth. You should use the right type of antenna and good quality cable. Understand how to correctly set up your station. 
Remember that FM is more friendly than other modes such as AM or SSB. Understand the type and the correct use of filters. Take care with in-car amateur radio installation. And if you are in a dispute with a neighbour, be courteous, diplomatic, keep a log and as necessary get advice from the RSGB. Thanks for watching this latest module of our Foundation online course. We hope you found it useful. If you're looking for some more help with your studies, we do recommend the Foundation Study Guide, available from Amazon in Kindle or paperback format. Thanks for watching again and best of luck with your studies. As a reminder, this video is part of the free Foundation online course. If you're studying for Foundation, sign up and get access to all of the course material, including slides, lessons, handouts, videos, quizzes and our mocks. You can sign up at www.hamtrain.co.uk. Thank you.